What's up you guys, Matt McGadam here with Driving Line and you're watching another episode of Chasing Dust. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you guys a couple of beginner tips for off-roading in the snow. Now it is a brisk 28 degree day up here in Big Bear, California. We just had a major snowstorm come through and dump probably about 12 to 18 inches of fresh powder. Um, it was a great night. We were hanging out at the cabin this morning. I woke up and the weather was so beautiful. The sun was shining. I wanted to go do a little bit of off-roading and show you guys a couple of my beginner tips for off-roading in the snow. Now, snow off-roading has been one of my favorite things to do in the winter time. I'm not big on snowboarding or skiing myself, so when I come up here, this is what I'm doing out here. Is I'm in the truck and I'm out on the trails here through Holcomb Valley, a place that I'm very familiar with. Uh, but the snow definitely adds a different dynamic to it and it makes things a lot more fun, sometimes a little more challenging, and sometimes even things a little bit easier. So with that said, I wanna break it down into about five different categories of tips that I'm gonna give you guys for off-roading in the snow if you haven't done it or if you're kinda new to it. So the first tip I got for you guys is carrying the right gear and gear is a kind of an umbrella term for a whole lot of things when it comes to off-roading it can mean recovery gear it can mean tools it can mean all kinds of stuff but for this instance there's a few things you definitely want to have with you on your vehicle um, when you come out here in the snow because they're gonna help you if you ever get into a bad situation the first one is probably the most important you want to have a shovel with you it doesn't really make a difference if it's a regular shovel or a snow shovel something to be able to dig snow out from underneath your truck if that's what's holding you up from moving forward or backwards when it gets packed underneath there sometimes it can make it very difficult for your truck to move out of a spot so if you've got a nice shovel you can just put in the back of the truck or put it somewhere and stow it away nice and safe there may be a time where you might need it so you have to bust that out and start shoveling snow out from underneath you to get out of there now the next few items are things that you probably want to have on your truck anytime you go off-roading anyway uh, recovery points on your front and rear bumpers are very important to have if you ever get stuck somewhere and you want someone to help to pull you out of something you can't hook up the strap to just anywhere on the truck or on the car. You have to hook it up to a, a recovery point that's rated to, to pull the vehicle with. Um, so if you've got stock bumpers, you, most stock trucks do have a recovery point up front. In the rear, they really, sometimes it depends. Some, some trucks have them, most trucks don't. Uh, so you wanna make sure you get that kind of dialed in before you go out here, because sometimes a truck can't get in front of you. They have to pull you out from behind or you have to get pulled from behind. And the only way to do that is to have a recovery point on the back of the truck. Next up is going to be a winch. Um, if you have a winch bumper on your vehicle, definitely want to make sure that that winch is working right and you have the winch in there. Everything is good. You have your remote, all that stuff, because when you need it, you need it. And you don't want to have to rely on something and it doesn't work. The gear is only as good as the person who's using it. So you have to know how to use your gear. When it comes to off-roading in snow, winching is actually very beneficial because it doesn't require the vehicle, it's like if you're in a toe strap situation, it doesn't require the front vehicle to be pulling and potentially spinning tires. We'll get into that later on. But a winch will just remain stationary and you can either pull yourself out if you're strapped around a tree or a rock, or you can pull somebody else out with your winch. So they, they have a lot of purposes out here when you get stuck in this snow. So now that we've covered the basic gear you want to carry with you when you come out here going snow wheeling, we're going to talk about reading the snow. And what do I mean by that? Reading the snow. It's, it's knowing what you're driving over or what you're about to drive over. That can make all the difference in how you tackle an obstacle or a situation or anything that you're in out here. There's many different types of snowfall on the ground. Sometimes people just think that, oh, if there's snow on the trail, there's snow on the trail. You just got to put in four wheel drive and go. It's not really the case. Even with this much snow on the ground, there's usually a few different types of terrain out here. Um, a lot of times, if you're out here and there's a lot of other people like there is out here this weekend off-roading these trails, 
you get these grooves, uh, just like you can see right here in this trail. As you can see, there's fresh powder over here to the left and right of the road, but the trail itself has been traversed over and thus has been flattened over. Having a lot of people drive through these trails can, can do something kind of interesting in the way of creating ice. Uh, the tires rolling over the snow will melt the top layer of the snow as you drive over it. And then if it's cold enough like it is right now, it's below freezing, it will refreeze. But the way that it freezes is now in a compacted kind of way. And what that does is it creates a very slippery surface. This is especially dangerous if you're on an incline or a decline because locking up the brakes, which we're gonna get to later on as well, is, is gonna lead you to just slide whatever way gravity is gonna pull you. So you gotta watch out for that. Reading the snow is really important. Actually, um, one of the best types of, uh, I guess, uh, terrain underneath you in snow wheeling is fresh powder. You actually have the most traction under fresh powder. So if you're in a spot where you need to get around somebody or you need to move out of the way or something, you can use fresh powder to kind of get up and over stuff. It's actually not as bad as this that I'm standing on right here, which has already been dug out by a couple of other trucks. This can get slippery. So if you can find fresh powder, just kind of steer your truck a little bit over into this stuff down here, you'll probably be able to hold yourself there until somebody passes or whatever it is you have to do. Or maybe you want to get up a hill or something and you can't. If there's another way to go around with some powder, you're going to do it a little bit easier. And one more thing about these ruts that you see behind me here, sometimes if they're narrow or if they're wider from a wider truck, your tires will fall into them. So you're going to feel the truck kind of fall into these grooves. You got to anticipate that. So when you're going around trees or if you're going down a hill or something, you don't want to be pushing yourself to the cliff side, you just got to make sure that you're ready for it. So when it does come, you can counter steer and kind of keep going straight down the road. Now, the next item on my list is arguably the most important. You've got to have the right tires for this kind of travel. Off-roading in general can be done with the many different types of tires. There's all terrains, hybrid terrains, mud terrains. In the snow, you definitely want to at least have one of those three. And it's going to be better for you as you progress up in those tire types. All terrains are going to be pretty much the bare minimum for what you need out here. Um, then you got the hybrid terrains like the Ridge Grappler that I've got on this truck. I'll tell you a little bit more about these once we get into it. Hybrid terrains being a hybrid between a mud terrain and an all terrain are going to give you a little bit better traction than an all terrain will. Not as good though as the mud terrains. Mud terrains have the largest spaces between their tire lugs and their tread. And what that does is it helps the snow kind of escape out from as you're spinning the tire, it'll, it'll push snow out of those big voids and that gives you a bite to, to keep moving forward or backward or whatever direction you're going. The tires are definitely the most important thing you wanna have right on your vehicle. You don't wanna come out here with bald tires. You don't wanna come out here with oddball sizes or you know mismatching treads. You wanna make sure that you've got a quality tire just like this Ridge Grappler so that you can get anywhere you need to go out here without slipping and, and you know sliding out of control anywhere you wanna go. Now, if you guys have been following the channel and the Chasing Dust series, you know that I've got Ridge Grapplers on all of my trucks. And there's a reason for that. Um, they're very quiet on the road and they drive real nice and straight down the highway. When it comes to off-road use and on-road use, the hybrid terrain Ridge Grapplers are my favorite by far. These are amazing tires in the snow. Uh, one of the things that I love about them most is that they're very, very strong sidewalls on these tires. A lot of times when you're out here on the trail, it can be deceiving with all this snow out here. Just below this powder, there's all kinds of things waiting to poke into the side of your tire. And if you don't have a strong sidewall tire like these Ridge Grapplers, you can be left with a flat. And nobody wants to be out here changing a flat in sub-freezing temperatures. But luckily, these Ridge Grapplers are super strong. The sidewalls are amazing. I've never had a single puncture with one. They're just awesome tires. So that's definitely gives me a lot of confidence to come out here and play, even if I don't know what's under this foot of snow below me. Now, obviously the assumption is if you're wanting to come off-roading in the snow, uh, four-wheel drive is a, is a must. You can't really come out here in two-wheel drive. There's no way you'll make it anywhere, especially like when it's like this out here. Um, some people have different ideas on snow chains. Personally, I'm not a big fan of them. If you have good tires on your vehicle and your four-wheel drive is working properly, there's not really anywhere you can go that you could go with snow chains. And they're just more of a hassle for me, honestly. They, uh, they're they really difficult to find in larger sizes. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've ever found like a 35 inch tire chain before that's easy to put on or you know even easy to store. They're just huge. So I don't like using chains, but having four wheel drive with the Ridge Grapplers is all I need to get anywhere I've ever wanted to go off-roading in when it's snowing. And now just as important as what tires you've got on your truck, is the pressure inside those tires. Any avid off-roader will tell you that tire pressure makes a huge difference on the trail, whether you're in dry weather or wet weather or snow or whatever it is. 
uh, the lower the tire pressure, the bigger the footprint, the more traction you've got. And that's absolutely the case here in the snow as well. I like to run my Ridge Grapplers at right about 16 to 20 pounds, depending on the trails that we're doing. If it's something that's a little more technical, I'll go a little bit lower, make sure I get the maximum traction that I can. Uh, but if I'm just cruising around the trails like I am today, it's just about 20 pounds is perfect for what I need to do. But guys, one thing you definitely want to be careful of is do not go too low of a pressure when if you do not have beadlock wheels. Uh, beadlocks are definitely a great option for those who like to go really low air pressure. I'm talking five pounds or less, but if you don't have bead locks, you want to make sure that you maintain at least about 10 to 12 pounds of air in your tires because out in this snow, it, it actually gets on the rim itself and makes it very slick. And it's a easy recipe for you to DB the tire and actually have your wheel come off of your tire. Um, and that's never fun because you're either trying to reseat that bead out here which is a whole mess in its own, or you have to change it out for a spare, which again, out here in sub-freezing temperatures is no fun being on the ground and doing that. And of course, if you're gonna air down, you definitely need a way to air back up. In my Ranger here, I've got this deck system. It's where I carry all my gear, and you can see we got some snow last night. Oh, and I also left some coconut water in there. I'm really happy I left these in the back of my truck. So as you can see inside of my deck system here, I've got this uh, 10 pound bottle from Power Tank. This is uh, the way that I air up all my tires and uh, you definitely need one of these if you're gonna be airing down because you don't wanna be driving on the highway with low pressure in your tires. It's never good for the sidewalls. So you definitely want a way to air back up whether it's a compressor or a tank or something along those lines. I can't imagine being in an open top willies going down this road right now because I'm freezing just standing here. That guy's having a lot more fun than all of us. All right, so so far we've gone over the gear you wanna bring with you, how to read the snow that you're driving on, the tires that you have on your vehicle, and then how to air those tires up. The last topic that I wanna go over is just your driving technique while off-roading through snow. A lot of first timers will come out and play in the snow and they'll learn very quickly that their normal off-roading style does not apply out here when it's like this. So there's a couple of adjustments you're gonna to need to make the way that you normally drive and that'll help you get through this trail without any incident. So basically there's five tips or techniques that you wanna implement into your driving style so that you can come out here and have fun when there's snow on the ground. Very easy. The first one is give yourself ample space. You definitely don't wanna to be too close to a car in front of you or behind you. If you're anything like me and you like coming out here with friends, which you really should, you should never come out wheeling by yourself. That's always my first rule of off-roading. If you're out here with friends and you're out off-roading, you guys are having a good time on the trail, just make sure you guys leave tons of space between each other, whether it's the guy in front of you or the guy behind you, and that will ensure that you don't slide into them if something happens, if you have to make a maneuver or something. There's plenty of space and you can get out of the way. I've been out here for two days. I've seen three or four groups of vehicles airing up their tires at the trailhead. Every single one of those cars in those groups had body damage on them, and I know that it's because they were just following each other too closely and possibly you know, having to lock the brakes up, going down a hill, not having traction, slipping on ice, whatever it is, and they just crash into each other. And it's no fun to crash into your friends because you're not gonna file an insurance claim on your buddy, right? So number one, give yourself a lot of space. Number two is don't spin the tires. I know that sounds really boring because donuts are always fun, right? But when you're just driving down the trail, the biggest enemy to you not being able to get where you wanna go is too much throttle and spinning your tires. You're not gonna get anywhere and you'll possibly even go the direction that you don't wanna go while you're spinning your tires going forward. You could be sliding backwards, never fun. So try as best as you can to keep your tires from spinning, whether that's using four wheel low and just a really, really light throttle, being in a low gear, that always helps, or just modulating your throttle to make sure that you don't actually have any tire spin. Now, of course, that's not to say if you get out to a big wide open field or something and there's a bunch of snow on the ground, go nuts. <laughs> go do a bunch of donuts, go burn out, go do whatever you want to do, throw some, some roost up in the air. It's always fun. But if you're just trying to get down a trail and have fun with the family or whatever it is you're doing and you're struggling to get up something or struggling to get over an obstacle, the worst thing you can do is just give it more throttle because that makes sense when it's dry out because you'll be able to grab with your tires. But when it's this slick out here, it just doesn't work. Number three, we're gonna go back to the brakes like I mentioned a second ago. The last thing you wanna do anywhere in snow is lock up your brakes. And it's really easy to do that if you just panic and you see something coming and you don't wanna know what to do. But locking up your brakes gives you absolutely zero control in the snow when you're off-road or even if you're on the road and, and you lock up the brakes. It's no different in the snow. 
locking up your brakes, whether you're on a decline or an incline or whatever it is, is gonna lead to you moving in whatever direction you have the most momentum. Doesn't matter which way you're steering, your truck's just gonna keep going the way that you were going originally. Just like the laws of physics, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter which way you're steering. If you lock the brakes up, you're gonna keep going whatever direction you were headed. Now, of course, everyone needs to use their brakes to slow down. I'm not saying don't use your brakes, but you need to modulate the pedal and just make sure that you're not applying too much brake to the point where the tires lock up. You, most vehicles have a front bias to their brakes, and when the front tires lock up, you're not going to have any steering either. So you got to be really careful and just, uh, just give it a little bit of a tap to slow yourself down. Or even better yet, if you're using four-wheel drive and you're in four, four low, you can use your RPMs of your engine to slow you down. Just put the truck into a lower gear and that should help slow you down with the actual powertrain or the drivetrain versus using your brakes to slow down. All right, number four is for you real newbie off-roaders. This is the same thing for sand as it is for snow, but if you need to come to a stop in deep snow, do not stop uphill because <laughs> you're not going to keep going. The second you stop at any kind of an incline, you're just going to sit there and spin your tires if you try to get going again. So if you do need to stop for any reason, make sure you're either on level flat ground or you're slightly nose downhill because that's going to let you keep going really easy when you have gravity on your side. And guys, finally, the last driving technique I want you to implement into your snow off-roading is using your traction aids. If your truck, like my truck over here, comes with a locking rear differential, use it. That rear locker is going to help you keep your momentum going. It's going to keep both tires spinning in the same rate all at the same time, along with the front if you're in four-wheel drive, and that'll keep your momentum going which way you're headed. That's going to be one of your best things to use. If you have a limited slip differential, make sure it's working. And if it's not, you definitely don't want to come out here and go wheeling with a broken limited slip. Having two open differentials doesn't do you a whole lot of good out here. You want to have some sort of attraction device that's definitely going to help you if you get into a sticky situation, if somebody gets stuck, if you have to pull somebody out. Lockers are a great useful tool to have on any vehicle. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you today on this beautiful snowy Sunday up here in the mountains. So just to recap, we talked about having the right gear with you, being able to read the snow that you're driving on, having the right tires to drive on this sort of surface, airing up and airing down those tires, and then finally implementing some better driving techniques to get you where you want to go. So I hope this video helps you guys out. If you're a little bit nervous about coming out here and off-roading in the snow, don't be. It's a lot of fun. I made some of my best off-road memories off-roading through snow with my friends and family. It's definitely my favorite winter weather activity. So if you guys are curious about coming out here and playing in the snow, especially if you live in the Southern California area, you want to come up to Big Bear. It's a really nice, fun, safe place to do that up here. Just want to thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to Driving Line. All kinds of great videos and vlogs just like this one coming at you guys every week. And if you guys like this video, don't be shy. Hit that like button, leave me a comment, share it with your friends, see what they think. I love making these videos for you guys coming out here and having a lot of fun. And I'm gonna hop back in the Ranger because it's freezing out here. We're gonna keep going down the trail and have a little more fun while we got some sunlight. I appreciate you guys watching. This has been Matt McAdam for Chasing Dust, only on Driving Line. I'll catch you guys in the next one.